In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. So today's Gospel is one that probably many of us are familiar with, um, but the challenge is always to look at these Gospels that we've read and heard over and over again, and to challenge ourselves in new ways, um, or even challenge ourselves in old ways, you know, in old thoughts, and, and reaffirm them. And when we look at the Gospel of the Sower, the parable of the Sower, we get this picture of somebody who's going out and throwing seeds on various grounds, and depending on the ground that the seed falls on, you know, something happens, all right? And I don't want to go through all the different grounds. I really want to focus on the good ground, because that's the ground all of us are aiming for. That's the ground that if, if I were to give you a choice, okay, which ground do you want to be? Nobody would choose the thorny ground, nobody choose the wayside, and nobody choose the stones. All right? Everybody wants to be the good ground. Everybody wants to have the fruit come up in life. But I think that one of the challenges to this is that we can kind of picture it and we get an idea or like we have a good understanding of kind of the theory behind it, if you will. But the practicality, sometimes we get lost when we don't challenge ourselves to be a bit specific. Okay, to ask ourselves like, okay, well, what is actually happening? So you're going to have to humor me today. And I think I'm just going to ask them what, what may seem like some silly questions. All right, but hopefully it'll help us work through this parable and we can take something a, a bit more personal away from it. So when we say like, okay, seeds were sown, what are we actually saying? When we say like seeds were sown, what was sown? Okay, word of God, great, All right? And here, when we contextualize it to when this was actually said, there was no Bible at this time, All right? So God was preaching, Jesus Christ was preaching, and he was talking to people and teaching people and showing them, All right? That was back then. Now for us, okay, we have all this compiled, all his teachings compiled in, in one nice place called the Bible. So the words are sown. What's being sown now? The Word of God. What does that actually entail for us? Right? When, the, when the Word of God is sown in our lives, what's actually happening? What's the process? What do we hope to see? Great. Last time I went into like my home, I didn't see fruits coming out of my body. So what are we talking about? I didn't go to put deodorant on in the morning like, oh, apple tree. <laughs> All right? Fruits what? Huh? Virtues. Okay, good. Virtues are what? What are some of the virtues that we hope to bear fruit of? Okay, love, generosity, care, patience. patience, kindness. Okay, these are all, all the fruits, all right? So good, we're getting a little bit closer, all right? So St. Cyril of Alexandria said, said it nicely. He is truly the sower of all good things, and we are his farm. The whole harvest of spiritual fruits is by him and from him. He taught us this when he said, without me, you can do nothing. Right? So all the goodness in our life, all, all the, the nice things that come out of us, our generosity, our kindness, our, our, our loving, our patience towards other people, right? all these spiritual fruits that we hope to see coming out of us because of the word that was sown inside of us or the, the seeds that had sprinkled and landed on our lives and, and, the, and the field of our heart, this is what we hope to see. Now what do we hope that those fruits affect in our life? Okay, ourselves and other people. Good, we can build on that and we can add. What areas do we hope that these fruits affect? Huh? Our hearts. And, and okay, when it affects our hearts, then what does that do? Okay, it moves the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit moves, 
What? Okay, it changes us, and, and what did, like, where do we see that change coming out? Okay, we, when we do the will of God, where do we see, the, uh, like, that action? Among us? Okay, there is not a part of our life that isn't affected when the fruits of the Spirit come to be. Okay, so when you look at your life, there is not one isolated area that spiritual fruit should affect. Spiritual fruit that comes out of us and really growing out of our hearts affects every single area of our lives. It affects our marriages, it affects our relationships, it affects our work, it affects our finances, it affects what we do with our time. There is not an area of our life that the fruit does not affect. So when the seeds were sown and the seeds are given time to grow, then it affects everything that we do, right? It affects everything that we do. Now, each seed has potential for great impact, okay? Each seed, you know, whether it be like, you know, each virtue of like patience or kindness or generosity or, you know, almsgiving, each one of these seeds has great potential. We know that because actually in Vespers yesterday, when we read the same parable of the sower in the account of Mark, he put it this way. He said, and these are the ones sown on good soil. They hear the word of God, accept it, and bear fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. So now there's a potential to the seed, right? All right, there's a potential. Each seed and each spiritual fruit that comes in our lives has a potential. You know, little or great. What's the determining factor? You and me. The seed has, carries all the potential. But what allows us to really see that potential determines not on our own ability all right, to really grow the seed, but our own ability to submit our will to His. Our own ability to really work with God and allow His Holy Spirit, as I said earlier, to work in our hearts and begin to move. Right? That's, that what, that's what determines the potential. That's what allows us to get to either 30 or to 100. But each seed, each virtue, each fruit has that potential. And St. Paul, in the Pauline epistle of today, which came uh, from 2 Corinthians, talks about this. And he kind of links this up and he says, By this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Right? So when we get these spiritual seeds, we have a responsibility. The power and the potential is in the seed. Okay? The Word of God has all the power and potential to bring about fruit. But really, it's incumbent upon us to take this and say, okay, well, what am I going to do with this seed? Am I going to nourish it or am I not going to nourish it? And one of the things that we struggle with is to nourish consistently, all right? And consistency is a huge part of reaching the fruit. Being persistent and consistent and, and kind of seeing the whole process through is essential to this because we all like the idea. Who here doesn't like the idea of a beautiful blossoming marriage, okay? Who here doesn't like the idea of a great relationship with our children? Who here doesn't like the idea of a church that is very generous, Okay, who here doesn't like the idea of a church that goes out and, and invites people in the neighborhood and brings them in and walks them through a relationship with God? None of us don't like the idea. We like the idea. We like the theory, but the practicality of it is a bit more challenging. It requires more from us. There's more that's demanded of us. And we need to see that process through. And it's when we see it through that we begin to see the fruit. And if you have come to me in confession before, I've probably shared this example with you. When we look spiritually at our lives, and I ask people, how's reading the Bible? How's praying? How, how are kind of the basics? And the common answer, not just for them, even when I go to my father's confession, he asks me the same question, like, I'm struggling too, all right? The common is like, well, I pray. Well, how much do you pray? It's like, uh, maybe like, you know, kind of on and off. All right, and I give this example. Say, for life to exist in our bodies, what does it require? It requires a heartbeat, okay? What's a heartbeat? 
It's consistent. It's rhythmic. Right? Without the consistency, without the rhythm, the body does not exist. Okay? When something goes bad with that heartbeat, the, we know it, okay? Because somebody starts to tank physically, right? They start to tank. And what, what does modern medicine do? We do CPR. What is CPR? It's very inconsistent. It's incompatible with a life that will grow and, and reach the potential of the body. So spiritually, personally, if we are to grow like in our own spiritual lives, there needs to be a consistency to it. That brings forth life. Same thing. When we get seeds thrown onto our lives, right? When you're hearing, oh, I heard this sermon on being generous. Oh, I heard this sermon on kindness. Oh, I heard this sermon on, on mission. Or I read this book and it really made me think of this, right? Well, what does that seed need? Well, it needs you to water it in a consistent way. And when we water something in a consistent way and we begin to learn about it, it brings forth potential. Potential for life. 30, 60, and 100 fold. But that process is slow. It's a bit frustrating. right? Which is why he used the parable of, of, of farming. Because farming is not an overnight process. Farming is something that, you know, it's very frustrating at the beginning because you put this little seed in the ground and you don't see it. And you do all these things to it. And you hope that one day like you'll begin to see a little root and then it'll sprout and get bigger and bring forth the fruit. But what does that whole process require? Consistency. That whether you, you, you see the fruit or not, you know that it needs that nourishment over time. You know that you're going to have to face battles of weather. You know, you're, you know different things are going to come up in your life and it's going to be a tension between, well, do I nourish or do I go take care of other things, right? This is, this is the constant struggle that we're in. That, that makes it difficult for us to continue to nourish the different seeds in our lives. But when we're consistent in doing it, and we fight through the battles, and we say, all right, I'm going to seed this seed through, right? and we sow bountifully, then we will reap bountifully. The farmer who sows and really works hard for his crops will reap at the end of the season. But the one who doesn't, right, who gets like sidetracked and forgets the consistent nourishing, consistent nourishing regardless of how I feel at the moment, Regardless of like, oh, do I want to read or do I not want to read? Do I want to pray? Do I not want to pray? Right? The person who sees the emotion begins to kind of take it to the side and say, no, the process is important. The consistency is important regardless of what I feel. Right? Knows that when I do that and I'm patient with it, that's when the fruit comes. That's when the fruit comes. And I want to give you an example here within our community. So we're gearing up for the Thanksgiving drive next Saturday. And, and this actually started like a year ago. And we did this Thanksgiving drive. And I'll be honest, like personally, like I thought, it, okay, it's nice. It's Thanksgiving. We should do something as a, as a church. And kind of, you know, different opportunities came to be. You know, we, we met Miss Betty from the, the neighborhood who I've mentioned many times. And, and kind of, you know, things fell into place. And we did the Thanksgiving drive. And it was nice. And we did 60 turkeys last year. And then somehow that kind of like worked its way into every, every Wednesday, uh, third Wednesday of the month, we do the meal service to the neighborhood. And we've done it the entire year. And some, some months have been nice and some months have been a struggle. And there are some times where I'm, do, you know, I'm in the food drive and I worked with Julia on this and I'm sure she can resonate with the feeling. Like we're doing it. I'm like, what are we doing? Like, I don't know, like, are there any fruit to this? Like, are we building any relationships? Are we just like dropping food off? Like, like it was confusing to me, in all honesty. And there are times where I'm like, okay, I don't know if I want to continue to, to devote the time and the energy into doing this. But we hung in there. We hung in there. And we, we made it work, and some weeks we had very few, and some weeks we had a lot, right? But we worked through, we were consistent, in doing it, we continued to communicate through the challenges. And last week, we just had a meeting with not like us and you know three different community partners that are making this effort happen. And and finally, like I got a sense. I'm like, okay, God, you're beginning to work. You're beginning to bring forth fruit from this that I couldn't see, that I actually wanted to abandon at some points. 
because now you're helping us build relationships with different people in this community. And it's through those relationships that we are going to get to the idea or the theory that I like that, oh, we should be a church that is really integrated into the community. That's a nice theory, right? It's a nice wish list. But the process of getting there wasn't so much fun, right? It wasn't always clear. The only thing I knew is like, okay, it's an opportunity. We should just keep on trying and maybe something will break. That was really just what I had going through it. And we stayed in there and now God is really beginning to bring forth fruit. He's beginning to open up more and more doors and more and more connections with us and, and individuals within this community that are beginning to see like our church as a, a neighbor not just like this foreign like object like here in the middle of the community and they're like you know dark-skinned people but like we don't really know what's going on with them no they're starting to see us as part of the neighborhood and that's opening up more and more doors and i know that like what we're going to do next saturday for the thanksgiving drive is going to balloon into something else because not only do we have thanksgiving and christmas but we also have funding to continue this for the next year and while that is kind of scary because I know the effort that it took this year, I know that if we're consistent and faithful in that process, it's going to grow into something more. But we have to be patient. The other thing that I'll say, another example, is, and I shared it yesterday uh, during the Thanksgiving potluck, that we started the church almost, you know, we're five and a half years in. And we started it, and I'll be honest, for the first, like, I'd say three and a half, four years, like, we were here, we're a group of people coming together, but it never felt like we were, like, family. Never got that, like, sense of family. And something happened over the last, like, year and some change where God was really transitioning us from being a community into being a family. And when I reflect back on, well, what got us to that jump of, of, of really, at least I'll just speak for myself, I don't want to speak for everybody, for me to feel like, oh, this is a family, as so I look back and I'm like, man, there are some rough times. There's some difficulties, right? There's some difficult conversations. There's some difficult relationships. There are some drop balls, right? There are frustrations with each other that we had. But we were consistent and persistent, not perfect. We made mistakes along the way, and people were hurt along the way, and I, I know that and I see that, all right? But we kept on trying. We kept on trying. And slowly and surely, like, God was, like, moving people in and out of the community and, and so on. But he began to form us as a family in this last year and some change. But we have to be persistent in that. And I know that what he is doing now is going to be multiplied. And when I also think of it in relationship to our, our goal of being integrated into this neighborhood. We can't ask people from the community to come in and be a part of something that isn't gelled together as a family. Because a family offers up love and acceptance. But we have to first like, be that family in order to invite people into the family. And so God is doing good work within our community. He is sowing seeds. But it requires each one of us, right, to be patient in nourishing those seeds, which is what St. Luke said when, in his account of the parable of the sower, where he says, but the ones that fell on good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. Bear fruit with patience. It's something that we have to see on multiple levels. That you as an individual need to be patient in sowing seeds that have fallen on your heart. You have to sow them. You have to you know, do it and be consistent in doing it. And when we do it individually, it encourages us to also do it communally. And when we do it as a community, and we see that the various struggles that we face and the various trials that we face are there to challenge us to be patient and consistent in nourishing these, these seeds that we like, then eventually it will grow into the fruit that we like, that we like to talk about. It's great in theory, but the practicality of it and the steps there, very, very different. 
we have to be courageous enough to take on the steps. Anybody can hold on to an idea, few people can walk the steps. We have to do it. We have to do it individually, and we have to do it as a community. And we have to nourish one another along the way and encourage one another along the way. Right? And always remember that encouragement and hope. We hope for what is to come and we encourage each other along the way until we get there. Right? Encouragement and hope. So hopefully, when we look at this parable of the sower, we've seen it in a different way. But what I want everybody to do is to really highlight a seed that has fallen on your heart. Whatever it is. Seed of kindness, a seed of almsgiving, seed of generosity, seed of, seed of patience, whatever the seed is. Be patient in sowing it. Be patient and consistent in nourishing it. And trust that God who gives good will bring about the fruit that you want. The potential is there. But it's waiting to work with us. So in our minute of meditation, we'll just kind of, everybody, like, focus, like, what's this seed that we all need to grow in our lives? And glory be to God forever. Amen.